Good morning. It is a pleasure to join the work of this forum, albeit virtually, and to provide you with a short introduction to our work in support of policy integration and coherence in the framework of Agenda 2030. But let me first briefly introduce the Millennium Institute. We are an NGO based in Washington, D.C., and our mission is to develop analytical tools, more specifically simulation models, to support sustainable development planning and to build capacity among our partners to actually use such tools. We do so through a process that involves multiple stakeholders in order to better understand their needs and customize our models and capacity development activities accordingly. Since 1983, we have been working with over 40 countries, our main counterparts are typically Ministry of Finance or Planning, helping them in developing their long-term development plans. Our work has focused on planning and reporting for the MDGs, and more recently SDGs, on sustainable agriculture and food security, specifically in Kenya, Senegal, Swaziland and Ethiopia, on nationally owned long-term strategic plans, as well as on green economy assessment studies in partnership with UNEP. This was done at global level as well as at the national level in several countries. Over the last couple of years, we came to realize that Agenda 2030 would have become, as it is now, a very powerful framework to guide development efforts, but also a very complex one. The 17 goals and the many targets and indicators are interlinked in a complex network that requires us to look at them from a broad and integrated perspective, knowing that any intervention directed to affect one goal would also have relevant impacts on the others. We have thus developed the ISDG model in order to support decision makers developing an evidence-based assessment of the current situation and trends for the 17 goals, testing alternative policy scenarios, and preparing effective reports and strategies. Let me now provide you with a short demonstration of the model. Let us look at a simple example for an Eastern Africa low-income country. On the model dashboard, we can have a quick look at SDG performance for all the 17 goals. The red bar below each goal indicates the expected performance on that goal by 2030, in case no change in policy or external shocks are introduced. This is what we call the business as usual scenario. Looking at the dashboard, we can rapidly identify areas in which the country is expected to progress faster and areas where progress is slower. As we click on any of the goals, we open a page where we can define policy interventions that are directly related to the goal. For instance, in the case of goal 1, we can define the amount and beneficiaries of poverty reduction transfers. This does not imply that such transfers would be an effective policy to fight poverty. For instance, investment in education or agriculture training might be more effective in the long run. But they are located under goal 1 because they directly affect the relevant indicators. But let us pick as an example another area of policy intervention. Goal 9 is one where progress is expected to be quite slow by 2030. So let us try to do something about it. In this window, we have the possibility to set investment for different types of infrastructure. Let us choose to invest in the paved roads network, which is often underdeveloped in low-income countries. By the use of this simple table, we can set investment on paved roads over time as percentage of GDP. Let us test a large investment, such as the equivalent of 1.5% of GDP throughout the SDG period. We can also modify the unit cost of road construction, which can vary over time. For instance, road construction might be especially low at the beginning of the intervention and to grow gradually to a higher level by 2030. Let us now go back and try to figure out where the resources to support such investment can come from. By clicking on goal 17, we access a summary budget of our interventions that currently indicates that if we do not achieve further revenue, 
The entire investment will be financed by borrowing on financial markets. Depending on the health of public finances, this might or might not be a good idea. To keep things simple, let us just assume that the donor will provide the necessary funding and set the relevant table at a corresponding level. We are now ready to simulate and by clicking on the Run button, the model performs the simulation in a couple of seconds on a regular laptop. Once the simulation is complete, we land back to our dashboard. Although now, below each of the goals icon, we have two colored bars. The red bar representing the progress in the business as usual scenario, as before, and the blue bar representing progress in our simulation. We can immediately see that, as one can expect, progress on goal 9 has been faster in our new simulation. But we can also see that progress on other goals has also improved. For instance, we have better performance on things such as poverty, hunger, health, economic growth, and others. On the other hand, progress has slowed down for a few indicators, such as sustainable cities and communities. This is because as we simulate a single intervention in one area, its effect spreads to all the other areas. But let us have a closer look. By clicking on goal 9 again, now we access a causal map that shows how the direct impact of the intervention propagates across the system. The intervention has led, as expected, to the construction of additional paved roads, which reach by 2030 a value of over 100,000 km versus the roughly 30,000 km that we had in the business as usual scenario, a major increase. The better road network leads to an increase in productivity because access to resources and markets is fundamental for firms' productivity. This in turn leads to faster GDP growth and a faster reduction in poverty, about half percentage point lower by 2030 in our new simulation. A good road transportation network is also fundamental for access to basic social services such as education and health and the positive impact of our intervention is also reflected in indicators such as the average years of schooling and access to basic health care. On the other hand, the faster development of paved roads contributes to the further reinforcement of road transportation as the main transportation mode. This leads to a larger number of motor vehicles here we see four lines representing private cars and commercial vehicles, and thus a larger amount of CO2 emissions. In addition, emissions of fine particulates from combustion engines increases, which coupled with the ongoing urbanization process leads to a larger number of people exposed to such polluting agents, with a negative effect on life expectancy. As a result, Life expectancy improves only mildly in our scenario because the positive effect of better access to healthcare is compensated by the negative effect of higher exposure to fine particulate. We have simulated just one intervention and yet the complexity of the system has led to some interesting results. Even more interesting is the analysis of multiple interventions at the same time the model can handle a large number of them. For instance, what interventions could we introduce to mitigate the negative effects of our road building investment? And how could we couple it with investment in social services to profit the most of the better mobility? When simulating multiple policy interventions, by way of the synergy assessment tool, the model can automatically assess the contribution of each policy to the results obtained as well as the emergence of synergies among them. In case you would like to know more about the many features of the model, further demos are available on our website. This was just a quick demonstration of the model. Please do not derive any policy recommendations based on it, but I hope it was useful to illustrate how the model actually works. The ISDG model produces results to 2030 and beyond for 78 SDG indicators which can then be used to support different types of analysis. For instance, 
We have just completed, in collaboration with the government of Cote d'Ivoire, a first SDG report for the country. The slide that you see now is extracted from the executive summary report, which you can also find in print in the exhibition hall, or can be downloaded together with the full report from our website. This SDG wheel graph shows the country's progress by 2030 on each goal in three different scenarios. The business as usual, or BAU scenario, in which no policy change is introduced. The national perspective study, or NPS scenario, in which we simulate the policies outlined by such national planning document. And the SDG scenario, in which we simulate further interventions on the SDGs that are not fully covered in the national perspective study. As you can see from the graph, performance in the BAU scenario is rather poor on many goals, but it improves substantially in the NPS and especially in the SDG scenario. Still, there are a few areas in which progress remains unsatisfactory. On goal four, for instance, where the delays involved with improving education levels for the whole population renders progress especially slow. Or on goal 10, where reducing inequality in the context of rapid economic growth appears especially challenging. Or again on goal 15, where despite the loss in biodiversity is halted by 2030, it is still very far from the target level. Our study also includes a detailed analysis of the contribution of each policy to the progress observed on 17 goals and of the emerging synergies. For instance, interestingly, training on sustainable agriculture in light brown color in the figure contributes to progress on goal two, but also on goal six, eight, and nine. Just as improvements in governance, in blue, which have positive impact on most goals. But without going in further detail into the results of the study, I would invite you to look at the report for the complete analysis. To conclude, we develop and implement the ISDG model to help countries in preparing successful SDG strategies and reports through assessing current performance and needs, exploring alternative development paths, establishing policy coherence, and all these facilitating stakeholders' involvement. With this, I would be happy to answer any questions you might have and would like to invite those who are interested in working with us to be in touch through this mail address. Thank you for your time and I wish you a fruitful continuation of the forum.